Hello creative friends. This is Yvette. Thanks for joining me today for this watercolor painting tutorial. Today's video I will be sharing with you all how I paint these simple home plants using watercolor. This is a real time step by step tutorial. So grab your paints and let's start. And by the way, if you like my videos and you are enjoying these tutorials, please like my fan page or subscribe to my YouTube channel. That will be awesome if you can give me a hand. So for uh, the pots, I'm going to be using some of paints gray and a little bit of the cerulean blue. For the plants, I'm going to be using purple, hawker green, permanent green, I have here my Viridian green, some of cadmium yellow, and some of cadmium yellow orange. And these are my brushes. All of them are going to be round. This is number 12, and I like the, the point. This is number six, and number two, and a little thin one one that is 18 slash zero so it's very thin brush for the little details okay so I'm going to put aside this picture and I want to share with you how to trace the pots okay so for each of the pots we are going to be uh, this is the watercolor paper so we need to divide our page the way that we want to be like showing the plants it can be as uh, one line and the three in a row or you can even give more movement to the pots so something that you need to be doing is a sketching first i use like a, a regular printing paper because in this paper i can be erasing and I, I don't want i don't care if i make a mess and i erase as much as i need and when it's ready, then I can transfer it to my good watercolor paper. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing first is to find the line, find a line where you want to have the two pots that will be on the sides. And then another line when it's going to be the lower one. And let me share with you the design like that. You can see why I'm talking about it. So when you have these two lines, then you are ready to start tracing the pots. And this is the way do I do it. I cut a rectangle, a solid rectangle, that is going to be the size of the pot. And when I have it ready, then I fold it to make this square. And then I trace one side like this and like this then I use my scissors and this is a way to have the pots the three of them the same same side but you can be doing like whatever shape you you are like a feeling that your pot has so this is Then I just I want to cut this little, okay, I want it to have like a little, like curve, but not that big. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the middle line of my page, and I'm going to place the first spot. Remember, this is your sketch, okay, you can add as many lines as you may need. And then we're going to close like this okay so the next you can apply you can add like two in the same line or even you can add one like in another like direction maybe like taller than the other one so in this case I want to add the two extra in the same level
and the third one. Okay, you have your three pots. Now I will draw the change that holds each of the pots. So at first I'm going to add two little like circles here and then at the middle of my pot I'm going to add one vertical line. I have this one so I'm going to be using that one because this one is going to be the part who is behind the plant. So we're going to do like a knot and a little loop. And then from here, you're going to trace a straight line to each of connecting the holes, okay? So by doing this, you have your pot ready to start drying the plants. So let's start with the first plant. So I like always to trace the first leaf. And from this, you can start like playing with the idea of which leaves are going to be behind or which leaves are going to be in front. So the, these two cords are going to be in the top and this one is going to be in the back. So you can even start erasing the lines that you don't need. And even you can start drawing the big, big leaves and then decide which ones you want to erase, you know, which part of the leaf you want to erase. And you can add as many as you want. I'm just giving you just an idea here. And when you are ready, then you need to add an inner, I wanna say, leaf, inside the leaf, just to have a line where the bright yellow color is going to be. The rest, I'm going to erase the extra line that I don't need. And this part, I'm not going to be drawing it because it's going to be dark green. But I'm just showing to you like that you know what is this about it. Okay, so we have our first plant. So the next plant um, is a succulent, but I don't know the real name. So imagine you are going to be like start drawing imagine this is a imaginary circle and then a big circle and then a big circle okay so this can be the lines or the roads of the the leaves that you are going to be working so find the leaf, the center and start adding little leaves Then you can move to the next line, or the next road, and try to make them like different sizes. You don't want to have a cookie pattern. And some of them can be out of the pot, something like that. Just going a little bit outside or inner. I like always to have a reference picture. It helped me a lot 
to the side my lines and how many leaves or how many um, color and how did the color I want to be working on. So this is just an idea, okay? And the third one is a cactus plant. First thing I want to do is Always the bottom part is thinner than the top part, so we can even erase this line, have something like this, and the last one it can be taller or smaller. We're going to put it smaller than this one. When you have the three plants, then we need to start decorating the inside part like a dividing the plant and I'm going to erase these lines because we don't need it for our design and now the outside of the cacti it has these curves like a waves something like this have an extra here and an extra here so then the rest of the cacti it has some thorns that we are going to be adding by the time that we are going to be painting with a little of spikes here and there but this is the idea guys okay so when you decide that your drawing is ready, something that you can do, if you're working direct into your watercolor paper, then use your erasers and soft the line. I use this type of, but this is a special uh, eraser to soft the lines of the paper. So if you're working in your uh, watercolor paper, first you need to soft a little bit here and then place it into your design to make the lines soft 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 okay if you're using a regular paper like I did something that you can do is to place this paper into a window and tape it and then put on top of this paper your watercolor paper and trace your original into the watercolor paper and that's what I did with this so this is my original watercolor paper okay this is a very good watercolor paper that I try to recommend you to use guys it's called press and it's 300 grams and it's excellent to do a beautiful wash okay so what I'm going to be doing now I'm going to start painting one by one but as we want them to be drying as much as we can alone if we're waiting this part to be dry then we can move to the next one if we're waiting this one then we can move to the next one so we're going to be painting the three pots at the same time okay are we ready and like for instance here my 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 pencil is very like heavy and this is what i like to do because when you're when you're painting watercolor you need to have your your lines of the pencil need to be super soft because whatever get trapped behind the watercolor is going to stay so as much as you can i totally recommend you to to erase your lines i took place it into my paper to make my line soft if i am doing this for myself <laughs> I will erase and erase as much as I can in some point I am barely able to see it but for you and for the class I want to leave like some lines 
that it's going to be easier for everybody to see. And another way is just to tap it and the pencil stay in the eraser so you need to move it and do it like this to have a clean area again and keep tapping now let's start by preparing our color palette okay let's let's paint the pots for the pots we want to have this is like a grayish bluish color okay so the way i did it was i used some of my cerulean blue paint gray In if I needed more, I just like come back and add more paint. Okay, so let's start by painting the pots of the first one. So by that, I have my spray here. You can apply some water. And I'm going to be using my large number 12. As always, be sure that your brush is clean because if you're like me, I forget sometimes to clean the brushes, okay? So I'm going to, I have two glasses of water, one clean water for uh, clean my brush and another glass of water to mix my colors and to have uh, clean water to make my washes. Like for instance, this is going to be clean water and this technique is wet with wet, okay? I'm going to wet this part of the pot And use the light of your lamp to check that the whole area is wet okay then I'm going to wet again my my brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of the blue and I'm going to add a little bit of the blue here and here a little bit here Then a little bit of your paint gray and I'm going to add in the bottom with the tip of my brush. Grab it again. Just in the edge with the tip of the brush. And if you allow the watercolor to blend and to mix, you're going to be able to see how the, the cerulean blue is mixing really nice with the paint gray, okay? And let me show you something. I remember now. Grab a little bit of your Viridian Green. Just a little bit. And tap it into the Ceruvian Blue. So we have the first pot. So I'm going to clean my brush. And now I'm going to use again clean water. Then I'm going to grab now paint gray because I want this pot to be a little different than the first one. And a little bit on the edges and I'm going to allow the watercolor to move. I'm going to clean my brush to take out the excess of the paint. And I'm going to move a little bit the paint inside.
Then with the tip of my brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of the Viridian and I'm going to tap a little bit the Viridian here and there. Need to be super soft, the Viridian. So I wet my brush again because I want to uh, have this Viridian super light. This part, I want to keep it lighter. So just be careful, do not paint. And if for some reason you paint it, remember we can swap the color. I just swap the color with a clean brush. Clean your brush. And you can come here and swap the color, okay? That's a way to swap the color. So the next one, let's clean my brush. I'm going to wet again. Grab a little bit of my paints gray again. Going all around with the tip and even if it's a dark gray as you are adding water it's very soft and gentle and I want to just grab the blue and add some taps of blue and I'm going to leave it alone okay so um, I'm going to be using my hair dryer to dry these three pots to start painting the plant. Okay, I'm back. And what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to start painting, I think the name is this one is a snake plant. So for that, I'm going to be using the base of my whole plant is going to be my cadmium yellow. I'm going to add a little bit in my palette of cadmium yellow. And I'm going to move and I'm going to be using uh, the number six and I'm going to erase a little more the lines. Okay, that's the best. Okay, so I'm going back with my number six. I'm going to clean the brush because we don't want to have another color. I'm going to spray. I have here. I want to add some water here just to clean this part because I don't want the yellow to go to the Viridian color. Good. I'm going to spray some water. Wet my brush. And grab a little bit of this yellow. And I'm going to start painting all the each on all the, the leaves. And now this technique is dry paper with wet. And now while this is drying, we can move to the next one. For the next one, we're going to be using purple and the viridian. So again, let's add a little bit of purple. I'm going to put it inside. So that we don't mess with our palette to battle. Some water and to the viridian that is in this corner, some water too. So first I'm going to wet my brush and grab a little bit of the Viridian to have a very light Viridian color. More water, lighter the color, okay? So in this one, we need to paint one by one. And something that I recommend you to do is paint the leaves separately, never two that are together. So let's start painting the first one so I add my green then I grab 
some of the purple that I have here with the water and in the bottom I add one drop like this and I'm going to leave it alone so each time that I change colors from green to purple I from purple to green sorry I like to clean my brush okay so I'm going to grab again the green and I'm going to paint not this one the next one be careful because these two ends get together just be careful do not touch it because then the colors are going to be mixing each other but in this case it doesn't matter because it's purple but it's better just to take care of the colors okay so that's how we're going to be painting one by one but with a separation in between and the purple in the pattern and sometimes you will notice that the purple is going to move more to the tip of the leaf it's okay just let it let it be I'm going to be painting two each time one and the next one is going to be this one that is here when you add the purple it's very important that you have the complete leaf wet and in the pattern okay And we need to wait the rest to get dry so while we're waiting we can move to the cacti so for the cacti we want to add our light green in this case is my permanent sub green I'm going to put it in the middle and then we need to add a little bit of my hookers green I'm going to keep working with the number six because it has a very nice point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my light green and I'm adding a little bit of water and I'm going to start painting the first row and add more water because I want to have a very transparent green. So one solid green all around. I love the air condition to be honest with you because I live in Texas but when I am painting watercolor sometimes it's like oh I need to work faster. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of my hawker screen and I'm going to add a, li a little dot you know in the little curve. Like this and I'm going to leave it alone okay I'm going to clean my brush this was super fast right so we're going to skip this line but we can go to the next one okay for the next one we're going to do exact the same 
grab your brush, load it with your lightest green, in this case it's my permanent green or sap green, with the water and add first a light green and then grab your focus green and one dot okay and that's it so the next we can paint let's paint this line let me check on your eye ah that's okay thank you jenny so light green here sub green the tip of my brush some of the focus green and adding a dot so I need to add more to my palette and a little bit of water and before it's drying to leave it alone okay so for this we can add another light green as well and remember that I am giving you the idea on how to do it but as soon as you start painting it maybe you will find a way that it works better for you and here I decide to change my brush for the number two that is smaller, I need to grab my upper screen and add some dots. Okay, and leave it alone. So for that with the light green, we cannot paint this one, but we can paint the middle one. So the middle one is going to be your focus screen. And let me just clean this in between these two greens, but we don't want to contaminate the colors. So, hawker screen, add water and paint more lighter. So, see what I did? I add water into my brush and came back and wet the paint that I already have there. And just dragging the color and I'm trying to be like faster because of the air condition is in the top of my desk <laughs> so grab my brush same color but with less water and I'm gonna go and add some in the edge with the tip of my brush I'm just barely touching the paper okay and and the other side that is more like a line and if you notice I am now mixing the two colors with my brush I am allowing the watercolor to move okay so this we need to wait to keep adding color but we can come back to start working the first plant that is dry already okay for that i'm going to be using my tiny brush let's see if we can start with the number two and then we can move to our little tiny one or let me introduce a new brush a zero this is the difference between the two and zero okay I'm going to be using the zero just to control better the paint so the, this is a plan I'm going to be painting inside the dark color that is the uh, 
my hooker screen but first I'm going to be doing a line outline and then the little zigzag that's the plan okay that's why I need this tiny one and maybe we will be able even to change let's see okay so for that I need to have this hooker screen and let's for the outline I'm going to be using my thin one so let's work this the one that is in the middle so that you guys will see better what is the plan just be careful if you are painting it I would totally recommend you to finish one part first and then move to the next one and then move to the next one. That's what I will be doing. Okay, load your number zero and start from the bottom part doing some zigzags. Can you see that? Hi Helen, good to see you here. Some zigzag like this. One by one. These are no shortcut. We don't have shortcut for this part. But it's so easy to paint it that you will like be amazed. Close to the top, the lines are like closer. Okay, and that's it. So let's keep moving. This is wet i can see the reflection so i need to be careful to not make a mess with my own hand so i'm going to paint this one do you close one eye when you are like <laughs> painting small lines Oh, I am the only weirdo. Okay, we have the first one. Woohoo! So let's, I'm going to move the chair. So next one. So by doing this, we're leaving one outline in the yellow that we came before. Now this one. And here we need to be careful to not pass the outline from the one who is in the front, okay?
I'm going to start doing the design in the bottom like that I will show where the other plants are the other leaves This part needs to be zigzag as much as we can. So now I'm going to paint this one that is behind. Here I have two leaves, so I'm going to paint first the first one that is close by me. Just keep painting zigzags. Another one that is behind. Here we need to be careful because this part is part of this leaf so I don't wanna go inside da -da 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 -da. Keep going. Okay. Another one who is behind.
the last one is going to be this one. Oh, we have two more here. Oh, this is part of the behind part of the uh, pot, so we just need to add this one here. Okay, we're going to leave this alone and we can go back and keep working then first my brush I think we were working we were using the number two I'm going to grab some of the Viridian green and I'm going to add clean water to the mix and you need to be careful and be sure that everything is dry so I'm going to add green to the next set and purple. The pattern. Here I have another leaf, so I'm going to try to go with the purple all around this. Like that when I will be painting the leaf that is in the front, it's going to be super obvious. So I'll clean my brush and grab again. Very thin green with the water to make it lighter and just keep painting. So the ones who are behind behind, I like to add more purple than the ones who are in the front. Like this. Just I push more a little more the purple because you want to see the two difference between the light green here and the purple in the back. Okay? So let's keep moving. some purple in the bottom mm -hmm. clean my brush and I'm going to try to paint two each time so gradient Purple. Ooh, this is a very strong purple. So I grab my brush, I clean my brush, clean water, and just I go back and touch a little bit here and there to help the color to, to be smooth and to move. Okay? So I'll green again. Water to the purple because we don't want the same accident and in the bottom what I do here when I see two purples together I want to see one of them like stronger so what we're, what we're going to be doing later with the paints gray we're going to come back and add some shadows okay so light is green Let's paint. This is this leaf is folded, so this part is going to be more like green, light green, and the bottom part is going to be purple. So first, I'm going to add just a little bit of green, and then I'm going to come back to this one. We can add the purple in the pattern. So I'm working dry paper with wet. That's the technique right now. I 
Maintain green. See which one we can paint. I think this Okay. And let me see this one. We can paint this little one. Because these two are dry already, so remember how we need to be painting the one who is not behind. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. Very soft and gentle this this type of painting, right? And I think the little purple. We're already here to add purple. Okay, so we need to wait the rest to get dry, but this is ready. So what we're going to do is to keep moving. So here I'm going to add the light green again. And we're going to be doing the same as we did before. First, the sub green, and then the hawker's green. Here, you need to take your time because as we're painting besides, you don't want to leave nothing with the white of the paper. You want to take your time and paint everything. my focus screen and the little dots remember okay clean my brush and now I'm going to be adding the same light green so we have a company here I don't know a little animal. I don't want to kill it. <laughs> there you go. Fly. Wait on. So I'm doing adding the hawker screen and the edge as we did before. One little dot. Okay. Clean my brush and grab again the sub green. Uh, I'm going to be using now just uh, my darker green that is the focus green in the middle.
So I, sorry, I am adding some of the cursed green. Just in the edge to change the tone to get more the idea of uh, shadows, okay? So, let me see. We need to wait this to get dry. So now I'm going to use just a copper screen. In the So very dark because here we're going to have two greens together so I want to have a very dark dark green that's mean less water here I'm going to clean my brush because I can move better the paint like this the idea is that you need to see that there is two plants two part of the plants at the same area you know my brush and just blend it. I'm going to go back and just add same green. Just around here. And here get dry because how, how I know I dry my paper because it's not moving, so I'm just adding some water. And that's it. Okay. This is too light so what I'm going to do is go back and repaint it with focus green again in this water and in the edge that's the idea of watercolor and I think it's the same when we're doing a colored pencil we're working by layers and then we need, if we need to come back we just come back and add more color right okay so now we need to wait this to get dry so i'm going to go back and let's go back to add a little more color to this part okay so for this little guy what i'm going to be doing I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow. Be careful that your brush needs to be clean, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit the outside, some strokes outside the lines, just to um, make more obvious each of the leaves. Just a little bit here and there. Whatever you feel two leaves are connecting is when I want to add this yellow. See? Just by doing the, these little touches, the plant is going to start like a popping up, okay? With the same yellow. I want you to add a little bit in these like white spots but I want you to add in between the green and the white just a little, a little bit do not cover all the white you want to see the white in the middle and some areas this yellow okay so let's keep adding this yellow a little bit where the white is but you don't want to cover the white again. Okay, so I think this is ready and I'm going to finish this part. I'm going to stay with the same brush that is a zero some water some of my viridian green and I 
have here one layer So now, while we're waiting the rest to get dry, we can keep moving in with the paints gray that I have here. I'm going to be painting inside the pot, so the back part. Close to the plant, I'm going to add the paint gray, which is move the paint like this. So the darker gray need to be where the plants close to the plant, behind the plant. That makes sense. So let's add again. Dark gray and this to be something like this. Okay. And this is a really good um, way to explain you how watercolor change the color as soon as it's dry. This one was like very like nice heavy color and look now looks so like I can see two colors but more flat. So let's paint this one.
Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to clean my brush and add some of the green that we were missing in this part. Okay, so now I want to grab the paint's gray that we have here with a little bit of water and when I want to start adding a little shadows into the back part, the, the leaves who are in the back part, okay? So like for instance this one, clean your brush and just move a little bit of shadow like this. So that means this leaf is giving shadow to this leaf and that's what we're going to be doing with, with all of them. Like this, this leaf maybe is giving shadow to this one who is behind. And we're going to stop the line by applying water inside. Just move the paint like this. Okay, let's keep adding. Like this, it's giving shadow all this to this one. You can leave the shadow very straight or you can smooth the shadow. Both are good. And I'm using paint gray. And yeah, by one by one. And some, you can even leave the whole little leaf in the paint gray, transparent paint gray, like this one. By doing this, we are working the volume. Like I were putting together what is far away from you, what is in the middle, and what is close to you. Let's keep adding shadows. So here we need to correct this dark area. And in the middle, I want to have a shadow. And then I want to blend it. So again, to blend the color, I clean my brush. And then with clean water, I move the color. In the brush, then I grab clean water, and then I add the water, clean water beside the line, and then I move the color. I drag the color like this. So as I wet this part, then the color is going to start moving towards the wet part of the paper. This part can look like very like slow 
but at, at the end when you see everything how beautiful looks together it's going to be worth it i promise you so in the middle of the lips i'm adding an extra shadow very important because with the paints gray I add a shadow and I allowed the edge of the leaf to have this beautiful line and that's what we're going to do so with the light paints gray I just need to be sure I'm going to be painting this one so we're going to go around but inside like this with a light paint gray and we're going to leave uh, the background an outline that's what you need to be doing with each of them so but as we work some of them with the shadows you need to be um, sure that when you're doing this the leaves need to be dry very light paints gray Checking which one I am missing. As I you're using a very soft paint gray, you're going to be like drying. Very nice. You will see, guys. Also, if we want to add like an extra light, we're going to be adding some of the white, pro white at the end to the cacti. And we can come back here and add some of the highlights. If we see that we lost some highlights, we can come back. almost I'm done with this part okay so now I'm going to go back and start adding with my thin brush the spikes <laughs> or the needles to the cacti so for that I'm going to be using my orange that is my cadmium yellow orange I have again my little tiny one brush 
and I'm going to start by adding this little This is the area, add the spikes and when still this part is wet I wanna go and grab a little bit of your sap cream, just a little bit and add a little dot in the bottom like this That's it. So we're going to be adding all around. Okay, let me show you the original. I'm going to be adding all around. Okay, let's do it. And this part I'm going to be white because of the background is dark. Let's start here again. Again, this part needs to be um, in white. My white pro and clean water. And 
and we're going to start adding some spikes in all the With my white here, I just want to add some highlights. And then here in the middle some just white dots where the white is go back and add some white dots like this okay so what we're going to do now with our word, I'm going to put aside this and with our word, paint gray again, I'm going to add some water to this paint gray to make it very soft and white. I'm going to be uh, working the chain. So the chain is super easy. So first add this circle like this. And then you're going to add some strokes, but diagonal, tiny ones. You need to be sure this is dry before adding the, this color, okay? And this change is in front of the plant, and this one is in the back, and this one is in the front. tiny tiny strokes and then here little dots and then strokes diagonal way and now this one the circle first and then the strokes where the cacti is I add more this part is like darker because for some reason we can miss it. So I'll go back and just a darker gray. Just in this part like that you can see it better. Okay. I'm going to do this and then this one. Okay, the circle. And 
the strokes. As we have the pencil in the background, when this is super dry, we can go back and erase it. I the knot or the loop and then dot. now is to go back to the pots okay and to give a little more uh, shadow into the pots so for that i'm going to go back to use my number six and this is the last thing that we're going to be doing plus we're going to be adding some shadow into the pots on this plant okay and here in there cleaning some areas that i like to do at the end okay so now what i'm going to do is with clean water to start by this one i want to add you know how the pots so i'm just adding clean water first and then i'm gonna grab the paints gray and add some of the color in the bottom like this I want to clean my brush just with clean water I am just moving the water like this so let's clean my brush again clean water in the bottom some of the paints gray on the bottom and some dots to make it irregular this one is the one that I need to add more color so I'm going to clean my brush and I wanna actually with everything
add some color here and there. Oh, I have a bristle here. It's okay. Then clean my brush. And we have a little bit of the cerulean blue, right? Here, we have here a little bit of the cerulean blue with water. And I just want to add some dots to, 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 to see. And now that it's wet, clean my brush and grab paints gray. And I'm going to add in the bottom the same as this. I clean my brush to take out the excess of the paint. And some dots. Okay. And now with my thin, 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 thin brush, I'm going to grab some of the lightest paints gray again. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to add. First, I want to correct this line here. And then I want to go and correct this curve here. What I'm doing now, I, I call it I am cleaning. And I want to add another line, but I want to first clean this part. Okay, so again, I'm going to add a line super close, but I'm going to leave a space in between the pot and the plant. Something like this. And this, let's see if we can do it. Let's try already. So now, the last thing I want to be doing is a shadow with my number two. I want to add a shadow with paints gray, super light first. like this and in the cleaning part I want to go back and add a little bit of the paints gray but more black than gray just to correct this line with my green, focus green. Here and here. And with my sub green. Here and here. Remember, we decide that we can go back and add some color in this part. I'm going to dry it and then add the white, and we are done. Okay, so last part, and we're done is the little white and the little stars here and it's better now it looks much better than before
Okay, so I think I'm done. Okay, so this is a painting. And I think I'm done, guys. So this is the, the original, my original. And this is the one that we did today. So I think they look so much alike. Thank you so much for coming, guys. And remember, if you're liking it, uh, these videos, please uh, like my business page and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That will be awesome. And it's a way for you to help me to keep serving you guys every single week with a new tutorial every Thursday. So please, guys, uh, keep in touch. Let me know your thoughts. And thank you so much for coming, guys. I love you. And thank you for my Patreon.